Hi guys, welcome back to another vlog today. It's currently 10 to 6 in the morning. I'm about to go get down a really, really quick train down to London at my local station to go watch Forest play away at West Ham. See you at the station. Come on, you Reds. Hey up guys, I'm just walking down to the station now and it is absolutely perishing. But uh, I mean, what do I expect at this time anyway? But yeah, it's a um, it's a good 30 minute walk. So I'm going to give my thoughts on today's game up while I walk down here. But um, yeah, so yeah, today, uh, West Ham, obviously, and I mean, they're struggling, they are. And I've heard a lot, lot of, big group of their fan base saying, if they lose today, that's more he's gone. But you know what? If I'm being honest with you, I think he's done good. He's obviously done a few good, he's done a really good job of the, the last two seasons he has. But um, this season's not gone great, but I still think he's doing a, obviously they're struggling, and he should be doing a little bit better, but he's doing better, better than what others could do, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, get them to Champions or Champions League for fifth or whatever it was a few seasons ago. And he's now picked up a few good few good wins. I know they lost against Tottenham and that and had a few losses. But didn't they like who was it now? Uh, Newcastle. Didn't they play well against them? I mean who plays well against Newcastle? Actually I say that and Bournemouth did but yeah. We'll just have to um just have to see you anyway how we get on today. But I mean our away form's dreadful but um for regards of West Ham I know they're uh, not bad at home because, if I remember correctly, we beat Leicester. Leicester or something, 2 0, something like that. But anyway, I'll see you guys when we get there. A little bit. Yeah, it's proper quiet, guys, and I'm walking around Newark right now. But I mean, what do I expect But at this time, anyway? But um, we'll see what it's like at the Northgate station where I'm going to do it Northgate to London, King's Cross. But hopefully, some of the Forest boys will be there, get a few score predictions in, maybe. But I doubt there'll be anywhere, anyone there at this time, anyway. Uh, might be uh, might be a few because it was cheapest I guess this is why I'm going on it guys because just trying to save money because these away games cost a lot guys you know so um basically I picked this one because it was the cheapest I think uh well it comes as like a return but um it worked out quite well it's like a single going down there at this time so yeah just thought I'd go for it anyway see you guys there see ya just coming up to the train station now guys to take about half an hour of ours but you know what, I'm here now. Let's get on this train. Here we are, guys. Newark Northgate. Let's get on this train and go with you, Reds. Here we are, guys. We've just got into Newark Northgate Station. It is really, really quiet here, but no surprise what I expected. Here we are, guys. That's my one there, 640. Let's get that one. Go with you, Reds. Nice cup of tea as well. Love it. And he's um, had a few interesting interactions with some Geordies, let's say. Well, not a few, I mean 40,000 of them. So, uh, yeah, they've, they've all come down in full force, ready for the big final tomorrow. Man United for them, unfortunately, let's say. We weren't, um, let's not talk about that in the semi-final. Especially the first one, the second one, I thought we were all right. But that's for another day. That's for the end of the season review, let's say, let's just call it that. But um, anyway, just been to the McDonald's, down into the um, King's Cross area. Let's get myself a nice cup of tea, as you know me, you know me. But um, now that I'm this early, because I think it's just turned 9 o'clock now, I need to find something to do, I guess, because I'm not going to sit around here. There's all to do around here, there's at King's Cross. But anyway, let's get into my day. Come on, you reds. Before I get moving, guys, I've just been told by, yeah, just been told by some Geordies that something's going on at Trafalgar Square. But I don't want to uh, really go over there in this, really. But I might, uh, I might go take a look, let's say, and cover up with my England tracksuit. So, yeah will be interesting to take a look at because I think there's 40,000 of them all piling up there and, and I think it starts at five but I think they're going to be there all day apparently. Right guys, I'm back again. Yeah, you know me. Anyway, but um, I've just had an interesting, interesting encounter with the uh, Jordans while going into the tube station. Let me show you.
Anyway, I'm just here at Trafalgar Square now, guys. I thought I'd uh, come check it out after those Geordies on the train were telling me what was going on here later on, but there's nothing going on at the minute, like, but uh, there's a few down there I've just been talking to. A few standing up on there, which I'll get a video of for you guys, but, um, but yeah, there's nothing really going on here. Look at these people out here. They look good. Before I leave this place, guys, it's Trafalgar Square here. We should have done like this something, something like this for Wembley when we came down last May, but I can't remember anything being organised or put on, so a bit pissed poor by the EFL or whoever would have wanted to sort something out here, but it's a bit, um, a bit odd they've got it from, I know, I can't remember, it's quite big, but I know it's a bit odd considering they didn't have one for the playoff final, but you know what I mean, I think Sunderland, actually no, Sunderland had one, didn't they? But yeah, we should have had one last year because it would have been quite good, because the way it's looking, they've got a load, a load, load of space to like really do what we want to do make a load of noise display some banners if that's what we're planning but yeah to the um community to the forest community they should really be doing something here i would have thought because it would have been best to have something here instead of um instead of just doing it all at wembley in that last year i never did the thing at the market square in Montego, which was brilliant that was absolutely class but personally they should have had something here as well because this is how you make a lot of noise right and down at the center of london also guys, before I leave this area behind me here, Trafalgar Square, you're probably wondering why I'm not at Colton Town today, my um, semi-pro team, my academy team, my youth team. Well, I decided to choose Forest Professional Club over um, Amateur Club for obvious reasons, because I can't go missing West Ham away, what can I say? You Reds! Finally, guys, after all this travel. Slide right to stay on Stratford Walk. On that line again, let's just see that. Got bloody delayed for like half an hour on the line, but anyway, I won't be going on that line again, but finally, we're here now. But anyway, guys, here we are, the London Stadium. <sighs> Hosting the game today between Nottingham Forest and West Ham. Come on, you reds. So here we have it, guys. We're at the West Ham United Stadium, the London Stadium. Here we are. It took a fair bit of time to get here, I can't lie to you, because that underground, the Elizabeth line, pretty poor. I wouldn't recommend getting on that, guys, if you can avoid it. I said I was getting in and then delayed it for like Walk 40 north. minutes when I was pulling into Stratford or whatever it's called. But yeah, here we have it, the West Ham Stadium. Oh, we got a big game right Turn now. left. But I know they're up for it as well, with Moyes wanting out. With them wanting, well, some of them want Moyes out, some of them want me in, but I think I've heard that, um, as I said earlier, I've heard that... Um, if they lose today, that's more it's gone for them, but it's tough to see. Jesus, I actually can't believe how big this is, you know, guys. It's bigger than I thought it was. When you see, you know, when you, when you see these guys on TV, you think, oh, they're just another, it's just like one of the, like, Etihad, for an example. But you know what, this is a lot bigger than the Etihad, personally, anyway. But, um, yeah, I'm a fan. Anyway, now that we're here, guys, first thing is, you know me, program, let's have it. You know, whatever this is, guys, here, I see it on the TV, but... I don't actually know what it is. I've seen it TV, news, and Walk everything. Walk southwest. Can someone tell me what it is in the comments down below? Because literally, Turn I don't right. have a clue what it is, but it's quite fancy looking, I can't lie. You know, I can't believe, guys, how modern and fancy these Premier League stadiums are compared to what I'm used to. But you've got all these food places and all that. Do you know, you don't get any of this at the city ground, you know? Literally, you don't get any of these food places outside the ground and all this. And all this digital uh, card only stuff. You know what I mean? It's just cash, cash as well. Simple, but yeah, I'm a fan though, I am a fan. Just in the club shop now, guys, to get a programme, and this is fancy, I can't lie. Number six, Bobby Moore. Some plan for them. Here we have it, guys. Got the goods for programme. Four pound though. Load of bollocks. Anyway, guys, I'm leaving this st area, or this stadium area, the away area now, for a few hours. So, uh, back in a few hours when the turnstile's open. Cut up with your heads. Let's go get some scrap. Bash. Yeah, I'm just walking now, guys, to the main food area to go get some food and meet up with an old mate of mine. And uh, I'm just wondering, yeah, I've heard about this, but I saw a video of um, some Chelsea fan getting um, knocked out um, last week or the week before. Yeah, where else did that actually happen in this area? For, well, this part of the stadium, if anyone knows. Because I reckon, well, obviously, all the area looks the same, but I'm just trying to figure it out. Anyway, guys, there's been a change of plans now. I'm not um, meeting up with my friend just yet. It's because, um, as I noticed earlier, there's more traffic about, so he's not on. He's not here yet. Not managed to get here yet. But uh, anyway, 
we'll talk a bit more a, um, about the game while I've got the chance to, while it's nice and quiet at the minute. But um, but yeah, we're uh, so it's West Ham today. Obviously, very struggle inside and that. I'm just trying to get the ground in the picture here. Here we go. Yes, they're a struggle inside, down below with us. But, I mean, let's be honest, they've got the players to stay up, haven't they? And they've got the manager to do so as well. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to see how we get on. And I really, 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 really hope from now, from this game onwards, so including this game, we can pick up some points away from home and go on to get a roll on. Because, I mean, the away form this season has been absolutely dreadful. Absolute annihilation away from home, let's just say that. Don't get me started on the 6-0 in Manchester or the um let's think of, let's think of another <laughs> annihilation of a 5-0 at Arsenal. Don't get me started. But uh anyway, let's hope we can pick on today, pull forward and get on. And um fortunately I heard the news about uh, Serge Aurier as well uh, yesterday. Out for uh, four weeks, which is a big big blow for us because if you, if you think about it, Nico Williams isn't on a par with him. But um Hopefully, as Cooper says, next man up and he can step up to the Premier League quality level. Anyway, guys, I'll see you when I go get some scrum. Cover you, Reds. They're an absolute banger, guys. Dakota. That brings me back memories to the Market Square day last year. Someday that was. What a day. Take me back. Alright guys, turnstiles are about to open, I'm going to go in, coaches are pulling up, finally guys we've just got into the, uh, the ground, I'll tell you now, the last hour and a half for me has been absolutely crazy, I can't like it, I've got lost around this, is it Westfield, Westfield Shopping Centre, anyway I was looking for someone and I've got lost and then he's, he's had delayed buses and stuff and uh, oh, don't get me started, I'm going to be the people around here. I tell you now, all these modern stadiums like this and um, I think somewhere else, Old Trafford, it's absolutely packed hours, hours before the game. Every, ever since I left the ground at about half ten, it's been absolutely packed. But it's um, it's been not good, I haven't been able to meet with anyone. But anyway, we've just come in with an hour and a half before kick off, so of course I'll get the pie in. But you know, here's my view, let's take a look. Not a bad gaff indeed. Yeah, it's not a bad gaff, guys, but uh, yeah, the prices of stuff here aren't very good, I can't lie to you. I've just paid, what is it, £10.50, I think, for a, about a size Big Mac, basically a Big Mac for £10.50. What a load of bollocks, but anyway, I uh, I give it a solid, uh, solid 6 out of 10. I've had better anyway, but I do like how it's all, I do like how it's all modern, but I don't like how they use it, if you know what I mean. So much people just come here. So so much different things other than just the football, especially that shopping centre. Why have they put that next to a football ground? You tell me. I know it might be getting the money and stuff, but I mean it doesn't bond well with a football match day, does it? It's just absolutely packed with people. But anyway, come on, you heads. Oh yeah, and also guys, I forgot to just tell you. So I just come back here now just to tell you. But um, I was uh, in the middle of all that with the shopping centre and looking for my friend and all that business with people. I went and watched some game. Uh, some 11 aside, I don't know, it's not youth football. I couldn't really tell who was playing, but it was some 11 side, but I don't know what kind of football it was. It might have been um, old, older people, you know what I mean? Like um, people like uh, middle aged men football, you know what I mean? I don't know what you call it. But anyway, watch the little game, one bad at all. So, guys, just below my seat down there is um, Marlon Harewood, you know, that is ex Forest and ex West Ham player. Look at him, he's so glad to be on his Instagram. Oh, what a boy. I hope he's supporting the Reds today and not, uh, not West Ham because I know he's a big West Ham. He's got a big look for West Ham, I know. But anyway. So, guys, I've got the pre match screen and you're not going to believe this. Oh my god. How class does that look? That looks quality. Anyway, guys, that was top scram. That was that was quality 9.5 out of 10 for that hot dog. Top tier. That's a lot better than what you get at the city ground. Good afternoon, Magnificent. You know here, guys. Here we go. Number four, Captain Joe Warren. That's what I was expecting. Anyway. Number six, Nico John Joe Shaw. Shame about Aurea, but Number seven, next man up, I guess. Williams. Our old man, Gardner. Lingard, 
on the bench, guys. As Number well. 11, that's a Jesse Lingard. Mr. Lau injured. Number 15, Lovely, you know, if he scores today Sokol. against his, um, against his former team, that'd be funny. Especially when they were saying all that stuff about us overpaying them. And that. It'd be funny, that would. Number 28, Danilo. I misspell his name. Number 31, Gustavo Hey guys, I'm with on Tour. And what's the score for me today? I'll say 3 1 to 5. Say 1 0. Come on, you Reds. You Reds. Five minutes till kick off, guys. It looks pretty busy now. Oh, let's go! Oh. 
the boy Callum. What's the score going to be, mate? Second half. Terrible first half. I mean, been playing awful. West Ham dominant. Um, I'm thinking still going two one Forest. Yates come off the bench. Over Johnson, Reds. you Reds. So it's been a good few hours since kickoff, and it's taken absolutely ages to get home. Been through all over these tube stations and everything, or getting national rail services to different parts of London and that. I don't know to get back to King's Cross. But anyway, I'm back home now, and I'll give you my summary of the game because why not? Let me give you a little talk on the game and my thoughts on the game and that because I thought. We were absolutely dreadful, if I'm being honest with you. Especially considering we were playing as well. West Ham, we were, let's just say, down there as well. Well, far down there below us. So, yeah, it's not looking very optimistic, shall we say, now. Especially, well, I mean, the, op the waveform in general doesn't look optimistic. What makes us look our survival hopes optimistic. But the um, to lose 4 0 to such a side like that and concede, what, like, four goals in, like, about 15, 20 minutes, like, what, what even is that against a side like West Ham who can't score many goals? I don't get it. Man, ugh. Anyway, guys, let's talk about these Cooper substitutions he made. So, yeah, Shelby, like, what was the point of bringing him off when he's personally, for me, I thought he was the best player on the pitch. And if anything was going to come of anything, and if anything was going to come from anything, it was going to be from him. He put a great ball into the box for Philippe in the first off, which I managed to go on camera looking at, so that's not bad, not bad at all, which I, I will attach onto this video, so don't you worry, guys. And, um, yeah, that was not a bad ball by Shelby, but and then when he um, if only picked up the ball throughout the game, I thought if anything was going to come, it was going to be from him. He was uh, the only one looking to speed up. I thought Cole back in the second half brought, brought a bit of intensity, but if anything was going to come from anything, it would be from Shelby. But, um, yeah. Brought him off and brought was it Ayu on and had a bit of a change of system, but not a fan personally of Ayu. And I told you now, I'm not a fan of Kilo Navas. I know he's what is he, PSG, two hundred k a week. I don't know something like that. Anyway, three time Champions League winner. He's not as good as people think. I think personally, I know he's got all these big accolades and that, but and he's I know he's got his high FIFA rating and all that, but you know what. He's just, um, he's, I mean, with any goalie we're going to get now is not going to be as good as Samba. Personally, I think Dean Henderson's worse than Samba. I always, I would always 100% have Samba over Navas or Henderson, 100%, but we're not going to get Samba back now, so that's just one to live back in the memories, I guess. What a player, what a player. I thought Navas is, um, he goes to punch it too much, so his handling's too poor. When he goes to, I mean, when he goes to punch it, he doesn't even... Like he, he he tries to catch it, but he like 
messes it up and drops the ball a lot, you know what I mean? But he goes to punch it too much, he needs to stop doing that and just start really catching it. And, and, then, and then when he does catch it as well, he needs to pick the intensity up a bit more, you know what I mean? He's, he starts to slow it down and it's not... It's not what we really want to see because when you get the ball, which is a rare occasion for us, for us because we play counter football mainly, we want it, we want it to be fast and sped up. You know what I mean, and get the flow going a bit more. But that's not what he likes to do by the looks of it, unfortunately. So yeah, I also know the I also know the West Ham goals were good, but I mean, how are we conceding four goals in that space of time? It's just it's like a crap. Personally, the away form is not just still the away. Performances are just dreadful. I can't, can't be bothered with it no more. But yeah, I need to start picking up like last season. I mean, last season was a one off, but if they picked up a bit more and brought it back, like what, what they were doing last season, bringing back really, really, really famous away wins. Like, remember that day at um, Blackburn, Blackburn away last season. What a game. What a game that was. 2 0, I think it was uh, Jimmy Garner and. Uh, was it Brennan? I think it was Brennan who scored a penalty, but away away days like that will be brilliant again, but I don't think we'll be seeing that for a while in the Premier League anyway. But yeah, anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this first proper vlog today, shall we call it. And um, yeah, on to, uh, who's next? Oh, Everton, that's a big one. Everton at home. So yeah, let's see how we get on against Everton, and I am absolutely not now, so I'm going to go to sleep. It's, uh, what's the time? Let's have a look. Oh, it's uh, half past ten now, so I'm going to get going to bed and get again off to sleep because I'm absolutely knackered. So, see you next time at Everton at home next Sunday. Cool with you, Reds. Bash. Don't go changing.